And so, it begins. Dark were the skies and chill was the wind as the land was covered in a veil of malice. Across the hill did ride the dread army of the night. Cloaked in mist and fog, prepared to rain down death and destruction upon the land. And the people did crowd for a savior, a noble soul to save them from their impending demise. Just as it seemed all was lost, in strode a mighty hero, clad in shivering metal from head to toe. Wielding a terrible broadsword, he did cleave his foes in two, smashing their ranks asunder with righteous fury. And when the day was done and the enemy strode across the fields in pieces, the people did turn to the warrior and say, We shall name this day in your honor. Speak unto us your wisdom. The warrior said one word that day, One man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. Indeed, folks. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to Blue Please here on CynicalBrit.com. The date today is the 11th of February 2011. It is one minute past eight in the British Isles. It is one minute past nine Central European time on the east coast of the United States. It is no doubt three o'clock in the afternoon. And anywhere else, while well, you can figure it out for yourselves, I'm sure you have the capability. Or as I discovered on Facebook, you definitely do not. I don't know, is it just Britain that gets taught how to tell the time very early on in life? I don't know, perhaps it's some kind of national superpower that we have at our disposal. Perhaps we could use it to create a second empire and tea will be drunk from one side of the world to the other and the sun will never set on that particular pot. A possibility. A possibility. Well, whatever the case, welcome, welcome. What am I going in for the show today? Well, firstly, I can talk a little bit about the hiatus, I guess. I uh, had a break for quite some time. A lot of that was to do... Oh, God. A lot of that was to do with illness, if I'm totally honest with you. Totally honest. Uh, it, you know, it sort of still kind of is, really. I mean, the, the whole illness thing has not subsided, although it is getting better, thankfully. Pretty happy about that. It's not particularly nice to have. The other part being that I needed some time just to sort of collect my thoughts. I mean, Blue Please, if you have any idea, Blue Please had up until that point been running for basically a year straight with no breaks. Now, obviously, the occasional Friday it wasn't airing, but it had pretty much been, yeah, try that one again, pretty much been running for a year. Uh, I'd been, actually, it must have been for even longer than that, actually, because when I started doing. I think it was season three on WoW Radio was running before season four when I transferred over to CynicalBrit.com. And then season four had how many episodes? Lots. If I'm totally honest, if we want to go for something particularly special, we'd say an awful lot. You know, 40 episodes of season four, we've been running season three and everything. So yeah, you know, the show had been going on for over a year. And probably in that time, I maybe spent a few months actually actively playing WoW. And obviously the beta was a massive deal and loads of content came in there, which was great. You know, the beta was a real revelation for a lot of people, myself included. And then, of course, when once the game went live, started off with the Azeroth Daily and all the other work. And I haven't actually had a chance to really play an awful lot. And I think over the time that I've not been playing, I've been reflecting on the possibility that something like World of Warcraft is a game that I have maybe drunk my fill of, and I don't know if it's possible to re-enthuse me on the subject. And we'll be going into that a little bit later on in the show. 
I've got a few topics to cover. We're going to be talking about, of course, what you... I promised this, you know, and if you didn't see it coming, then you just haven't been paying attention to anything. Look of the draw, ladies and gentlemen. Look of the draw will be discussed. And I'd also like to tell you why I think that... Regardless of Blizzard's reasoning, they are horrendously short-sighted on this particular issue and what it will actually cause. Also, we'll be discussing whether or not more of the same is okay. World of Warcraft Cataclysm, the evolution as opposed to the revolution. All of the innovative elements of Cataclysm actually gutted before release, particularly, of course, Path of the Titans, which is going to be the real thing that was the massive, massive change in the game, which would have hopefully given people that were playing the game for a very long time something new to actually get their teeth into it's important and we'll be having a little bit of a user participation section towards the end of the show i'd like to know if you are still playing and if you are still enthused have you stopped are you still playing what is it that's keeping you playing what isn't and you can send in the emails there to the murloc at gmail.com that is the murloc at gmail.com also please accompany it with when you started playing because i would like to see if there's any kind of correlation there are the veterans getting sick of it or in reality are the veterans really back on board now after seeing the cat Cataclysm is a bit of a return to form after Wrath of the Lich King, even though Blizzard is going out of its way to try and ruin that. Yes, indeed, folks. I remember it. You know, I wasn't even on the air. I could have very well have gone on the air at that point and said what I needed to say on the issue of Ghost Crawler's big post about, yes, heroics are hard, while simultaneously 27 different nerfs were being put in place for patch 4.0.6 to various pieces of heroic content. And then, of course, we stack that up alongside the wonders of the look of the draw buff. And then one has to wonder if you can turn around and still say that heroics are hard. A good question. A very good question. And, of course, at the end of the show, we'll be having the illusion of choice. Do I still have the noise? I should do. I, I've been having a look at things. Do I still have it? Yes. There you go. Yes. There we go. Uh, I had to reset up pretty much everything when it comes to getting Sam Broadcaster working again. But, you know, I'm finally on the latest version, things like that. I had a very old license. I was running an old version for ages. And then I finally decided to pony up the money for the new one. And, of course, it works really, really well. So I'm really happy with that. I would like to know what exactly you want me to talk about for the next 15, last 15 minutes of the show. That is the segment we call the Illusion of Choice. Email it into the at gmail.com. Subject line, Illusion of Choice. And if it's good, we'll be talking about it towards the end of the show. I always like that segment. It, it sounds like a little bit of cheap content, but the reason that I like it is that it throws a topic at me that I haven't prepared for. So it lets me talk straight from the heart and make a complete and total ass of myself in the process. Always a good way to do things. Always a good way to do things, folks. No question about that. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for actually tuning in. As I say, I know I've been off the air for a very, very long time. It's understandable, really, when you think about it. It has been the longest-running podcast for a very, very long time. A podcast that has relied not so on segmental kind of design... It's gone through various segments in the past, but what it's really relied on is me sort of having an opinion about what's going on in World of Warcraft. And I'm hoping that people realize that, you know, as Azeroth Daily continues to be released, that I do still have opinions about World of Warcraft, even if I don't play it an awful lot anymore. It is certainly th something that I think I will come back to. But we'll be talking about that later on in greater detail. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for this. Uh -oh. <laughs> That sounds like it's mail time. Here's the mail. Oh, it never fails. Oh, it makes me want to wag my tail. Oh, when it comes, I want to wail. Yes, indeed, folks, that is mail time. That will be the time where we read the mail, and we do have some. Yes, indeed, we do. So I'm going to be checking that out right now. This one comes in from Digitatez. Hello, Total Biscuits. Glad to see you doing Blue Please again. Anyway, this is less of a question about World of Warcraft and more about MMOs and their design philosophy in general. Do you think they hurt the gaming industry? Their goal is to try and stretch the content, design within the parameters of the world, push an engine to its very limits before even thinking about implementing a new one. I've heard that MMOs are notorious for growing stagnant, and it's only really recent that it's actually changed. Do you think that's due to the inherent nature of MMOs, and is it detrimental to gaming? 
Well, that's a multi-tiered question, isn't it, folks? A multi-tiered question. Well, okay, here's the first thing. I don't think that, say, stretching an engine to its very limits is detrimental to gaming. At all. Yeah. Engines are expensive. Engines take an awful lot of design time. And if games had to design a different engine every time they came out, then, in reality, we get a lot less time dedicated to actual content. Indeed, there's been a bit of a revolution in the indie scene lately, thanks to the uh, indie license for the Torque engine. Basically, any indie company that makes under $250,000 a year is able to do a license for each developer for, like, about 70 bucks for the Torque engine. And as a result, we've seen all sorts of games come out with the Torque engine, and it's wonderful. It really takes an awful lot of effort out of the hands of developers, and it allows them to focus on what they really want to do, which is to make a good game. I do not believe that stretching an engine to its limit is a bad thing. It's been happening an awful lot. It happens a massive amount in the past. I mean, have a look at current Unreal 3 engine. How long has the Unreal 3 engine been going out, ladies and gentlemen? That is a great question. I would love to know. It's been at least since 2006, I would think. Let's find out exactly when this first came out. Let's have a visit to Wikipedia. Okay, da, 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 da. Unreal 3 Engine, Unreal 3 Engine, uh, you are not actually telling me when it was first used. Why? Why are you not doing this list of Unreal 3 Engine games? Here we go, this should help out. And I can't list it by year because it's all over the sodding place. I think it was 2006 by the looks of it. Original, yep, yeah, Original Gears of War. Fairly sure that was when it came out along with, of course, Unreal 3. So that engine has now been in place for almost half a decade. Uh, that's, a, that's a fairly big deal. If we have a look at the first Unreal Engine, the first Unreal Engine was rolling from at least 1998. Yes, indeed, that was when it came out, 1998. And that was extended all the way through. I, I kid you not, you want to know what the last Unreal, the original Unreal Engine game was? Brother Bear by Disney Interactive. I, I kid you not, you know, this was five years after that engine. Disney's Brother Bear... For the Game Boy Advance and Windows used the Unreal Engine, folks. Yes, it did. (laughs) I don't know why, but it did. It terrifies me, but it did. What about the Unreal Engine 2? You know, let's do a little bit of comparison right here. (laughs) Lol, I'm laughing at the fact that Duke Nukem Forever is on the list for this. No, it is not using that engine anymore. That is now using Unreal 3. But... The original game that came out of the Unreal 2 and 2.5 engines were coming out around 2004. Now, actually, all the way back to until 2002. Yeah, Unreal Tournament 2003. And going all the way through, and then you've got yeah, the 2.5 engine, which is what they used for Unreal 2K4, I believe. And I think the last game to come out with that was in 2008, I believe. Yeah. Actually, no, I am... No, I Am Alive isn't out, and probably won't, so never mind. Basically, a bunch of MMOs started using that, which is kind of bizarre, I know, but it is in fact the case. Marshall Online used it, and Hong Hui Online, which I believe they're both Korean grindfest MMOs. Actually, Killing Floor used it in 2009, so that's been going on for a very, very long time. I don't believe that that is bad. I don't think that's bad at all. I think that's actually kind of a good thing. The fact that MMOs continue to use the same engine, it's okay. I think the problem with MMOs, yeah? The problem with MMOs is that they expect you to play the same game for a very, very long time. And this will be something that we do come into in the future sort of content segment we're going to be doing a little bit later on in the show about the viability and the last ability and the innovation of World of Warcraft. The problem with the engine is that when you have a game that exists for a very long time that has an overly active shelf life, you know, and an overly lengthy shelf life, because that's what we're talking about really with MMOs. I mean, WoW is a game that's been played solidly now for six years. Now, there aren't an awful lot of games that can really claim that. There are some, certainly. I mean, Counter-Strike, prime example. Quake, another example. But in reality, they are very, very limited. They really, really are. And what makes it worse is the fact that they expect you to pay $15 a month. And I think that what people expect from that, and actually that's what I expect as well, is that a game that requires me to pay $15 a month will have a constant stream of new content and will not repeat the same thing over and over and over again because I will get bored and I will unsubscribe. I think the problem is that people view WoW and have a look at WoW as a prime example of why... Extending an engine past its normal lifespan is a bad thing. 
And I think in the case of WoW, it's even worse than a lot of other games. Much, much worse. And the reason for that is that actually the WoW engine is a modified Warcraft 3 engine. Which means that by the time WoW came out, the engine was already outdated. And now it's been stretched to breaking point. I've said this over and over again, and I'll continue to say it until I'm blue in the face. And I know for a fact that it's true. World of Warcraft is a very inefficient game. Extremely inefficient. It does not scale well with technology. It randomly has problems all over the place. There are areas of the world where your frame rate plummets for no visible reason. If you turn shadows on in that game, it will destroy any computer that you give it. I have the most powerful home computer you can buy. And if I turn on shadows in Teldrassil, I kid you not, Teldrassil, bearing in mind I'm running a 4.1 gigahertz, hexacore, 980X machine, with 580s, no, GTX 580s in it. If I turn that on, it's even 720p in a window. In Teldrassil, it will go beneath 30 FPS. And it looks bad. And I think that's why people fixate mostly on the engine of, say, WoW as opposed to other games like maybe EVE. Yeah? The EVE engine seems to have scaled and grown much better. But there are other engines that haven't. I mean, the EverQuest engine didn't, to the point where they replaced it. And it would not surprise me in any way if they do that with WoW. But I think here's the most critical thing. The point that you're trying to make, and there is validity in it, is that the engine can limit development and can limit innovation, and it absolutely can. Because of the way that the engine is currently designed, the combat system of WoW can barely change. The way that the terrain is set out can barely change, and phasing can only go so far in that regard. You still have a stagnant and static world, and that is in itself limited by the engine. Is that stifling innovation? Actually, no. I think just the opposite. I think finally, and we're seeing this right now, finally, games developers are getting it into their heads that they cannot be WoW. They must innovate beyond WoW because trying to clone WoW failed for like five or six years. So if anything, it is the opposite of what you're claiming right there. There are engines now being developed like the DC Universe engine that has blatantly, you know, it's actually running on Unreal 3, I think. But yeah, it is absolutely running on Unreal 3. But the way that the engine is designed is now giving you a much better MMO experience. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. You're listening to Blue Please right here. This music goes by the name of Giles Mile Long Dong. I am terrified. It's by Trentheon. You should recognize it. Enjoy.